Hey, what's going on guys? Thanks for joining me once again in Tabletop Wars. Today going over a little bit of the work I've put into Tabletop Wars over the past five days. So last time we left off, we had just, you know, gotten a pretty solid movement system down for a unit. At that point in time, it was just a cube. As you notice, I have some placeholder art now, which is just some free assets that I grabbed off of the Unity store just to plug in so that... You can easily look at something and identify, oh, that's a, that's a land unit, that's an airplane, blah, blah, blah. So that's all that good stuff. So let's just go ahead. I'm going to first off, I'm going to demo what I have done, and then I am going to show you how it works. So let's do it. So here's our scene. We have this little pirate ship boat, which is, uh, I think it's just a cruiser. It's a cruiser ship. But as you can see, when you click a unit, it's pretty hard to see on the water, but there is a preview on the ground of where the unit can move. <clears throat> so I've added in movement tokens. Spaces now cost movement tokens to move on the map. So as you can see, the, the infantry has three movement tokens and planes cost one, but mountains cost three and forests cost two. Don't have placeholder art for the tiles yet. That's my next order of business, but the, the uh, brown is the mountains and the green is the forest. Blue is ocean. So as you can see, he can move there and he can move there and you can see it changes. And I think it works pretty well. It works pretty well. I like the way that it works. Uh, need to adjust the colliders a little bit because you can see I could, I when I click this unit, I tried to move here but I clipped on this this unit's collider so now I have this one selected but this airplane it can pretty it can move I think 10 spaces or 12 so it can pretty much move really far really fast which is nice I like how it came out the movement looks nice with the placeholder art and I think all in all it's coming along pretty good pretty pretty good like Units that are naval can't move on land. Air units can move everywhere. There's no penalty to them. At least I don't think. There is a slight bug where I need to... Like you can see that one's not highlighted because that's where the unit is. That's not highlighted because there's a land unit there. I need to change that so it can move there because air and land can occupy the same space. But other than that, it's pretty much pretty much done with the preview so let's go take a look at the code all right so we've jumped in i believe last time only thing i had written out was the controls manager which controls the movements for all the units we haven't changed this too much but what we have changed is we have added We have added on. Oh, so we changed it so now a unit can only move if <clears throat> that tile has its its highlight highlighted. So that's where this comes from. So that's the way that it moves to those civic positions. That's the same. Um, we have a map manager to reset the list. Let's go to the map manager. All the map manager does is it... These are, this is used, this is used for both tiles and units, which is good. This doesn't, isn't used yet. It might be used later. I haven't decided yet. I might just end up using um, tags or layers for actually saying what that is. I haven't decided yet. Um, this is the list that is compiled of all the highlights that are currently active when you select a unit. So those blue squares that get put on the ground, um, they get added to a list. And then once the unit moves, it deletes the list and resets it. And that's what the reset function is. So pretty, pretty, pretty easy there. Go down the line here. That's the same. So we added currently occupied title to actually there was nothing in unit behavior now, but now it has a variable that holds a currently occupied tile. So that you, it knows which tile it's on, and it's it always knows that, and it does that by raycasting from itself. So if we jump over to unit behavior, you can see that when <clears throat> when the game is started, it sets the occupied tile. It does this by raycasting straight down uh, eleven point five, which is just a 
arbitrary number for right now. I might set that to a variable later. But for right now, it's 11.5 just because of planes in the sky. And then when it hits a tile, it sets the currently occupied tile to that. <clears throat> it works fairly well. Fairly well. That might need to be changed later, but for right now, it works. Um, so we get the we can get the unit's health, but uh, these are meant to be private. For right now, they're public. But when this part of the game is done, and I'm done working with it, I'm going to have them as private, and this is the only way you can get it. Just because I don't want them, act, I don't want them changed outside of the unit behavior script. <clears throat> then change the occupied tile. Pretty simple and explanatory, self-explanatory. Jump back over to the controls manager, and then you just change the occupied tile once you. One once you select the tile to move to, it changes the occupied tile to the destination. <clears throat> that works well. I haven't seen any problems with that yet. Um, we reset the variables and reset the list right here. That's new. Move units the same. Didn't change that. It's pretty much it for controls manager. Now let's jump over to highlight manager. And this is where all the highlighting comes from. <clears throat> this is all new. So my highlight, it, it probably isn't the best solution right now. I, I will definitely tell you that right now. I don't, when you click an airplane, the more tiles that it has to highlight, the, the worse it is. When you click on an airplane, you can see a drop in frames. When you click on the plane, which isn't good, that means it's taking way too much of the stack to actually process that, which I'm not a huge fan of. Um, it's mostly because of the way I set this function up, but it works. It works for right now. I might optimize it later or I might leave it as is. I haven't really decided, but the way that it works is, um, when a unit selected, it says draw highlight, and then you pass in the, the, uh, the unit that you want to highlight from. That's when you select a unit, which is, I didn't actually show you which is right here. Yeah, it's right here, so, wait, is it? Yeah, it recasts the tiles. Yeah, that's it. Um, so it calls this function, which is draw highlight, and then it sets the tokens to that. Wait, what? It doesn't actually do anything. Okay, so it doesn't call draw highlight. I don't know what, I don't think draw highlight does anything. I don't think it's used anymore, I could delete it. But it calls raycast the tiles, which put which it needs to grab the position of the currently selected unit and then the amount of movement tokens that that unit has, that's passed into the function. And when, when it goes through this, it says tile, it creates a new game logic called tile go and temp tokens is equal to tokens tile go equals raycast from position and it gives the gives a position and then which way you want to go so where's raycast from position ah it's down here <clears throat> so then it calls this function and it says raycast hit if physics.raycast basically the way that this works is it starts from the unit's current position and that says raycast from this position to do the highlights. And what it does is it raycasts forward, right, left, and back. And if it hits a, if it hits an object and it's a tile, then it it recalls highlight. It re, re, it calls the same function, which is um, it calls tile go, it calls raycast to tiles again. And then it just keeps going over and over again until it doesn't hit another one or or the uh, <clears throat> unit doesn't have any movement tokens right now. And that's where this comes in. And it says if tile go is not equal to null, equal to null then it, the game object is currently the currently selected unit, the tile type. So basically what it does is it creates two temporary variables, temporary enums, which are defined in the uh, not unit behavior. I think it was tile behavior or highlight behavior. It was one of those, and it's basically used across all of them. I showed it to you earlier, but it 
it grabs the tile type, which is uh, what it just raycasts to. And then it grabs the unit type of the sl currently selected unit. And then it says if the tile type is equal to the unit type or the unit type is an air unit, then it goes into here. And then it says if the temporary tokens it minus the tile go and then it grabs the tile behavior, the token cost of the tile that's going to go on is more than or equal to zero, which means that it can move onto that space. Then it will go into here and the tile behavior is not occupied. So occupied is false. Got it? Pretty good. Um, so then we go in here and we set the highlight to true. We add the we add that highlight to the list and highlight manager. And then we say if the temporary token the temporary tokens minus tile go dot get component is if that minus if temporary tokens minus the next tiles cost is still more than zero. Then it calls raycast the tiles again. It's pretty good. So basically, think of it this way. It was hard for me to wrap my head around it. You might be much, 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 much smarter than I am. But you think about where the unit is. You're calling forward, right, left, and back. Now, when you call forward, it's going to go forward. It subtracts from the tokens to forward. And then it says, hey, do I have tokens left? And then, then you do. So then it raycasts left right forward and back again and it just keeps doing that until it runs out of tokens i thought of it was a pretty pretty smart way to do it and, but like i said it might need a little bit of tweaking because it seems like it takes too much processing power and we want to we want to nip that in the butt right now before it becomes a problem later down the road because that would suck that would real suck so highlight behavior I don't remember if I use this or not. My original thought was I was going to have the highlights do it. So on enable, they would raycast the tiles. They would do it themselves. But I nixed that in the butt. That didn't work. Um, tile behavior. Right now, only tile, tile behavior only holds variables, which that's probably all it's going to hold, honestly. Uh, nothing in player manager, map manager, just we already went over that. Game state manager, pretty, I think, stayed exactly the same. Um, event system manager still has nothing. Unit behavior. Unit behavior said a little. It was just, we added set occupied title, tile, um, change occupied tile, and we created a struct. For the globally shared variable, but variables between all units. I might end up deleting this. I might end up using it. I haven't decided yet. We haven't gotten to the point where units are battling each other and using those variables yet. So I haven't really dived into these variables yet. So they could be used. They could not be used. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much the work I've done. Saying it out loud and explaining it doesn't seem like I've done a lot of work, but this was about seven more hours of work. Maybe a little less. Maybe that's an exaggeration. Five to seven hours of work. But I'm pleased with it. I think the game's coming along. It's, it's very nice. We just have a couple of things to fix and polish right now that bug me. Like, if we take a look at the airplane, right? Look how big its collider is. We can change that right now. Grab this little guy. Put that up there. There, maybe it'll be a little bit harder to collide with it. Which would be nice. But just, you know, little tweaks. So that we don't accidentally grab the wrong unit. Uh, but yeah, little tweaks here and there, and but all in all, the game's coming along nice. Once we get my next, my the next thing that I want to do is I want to put placeholder art in the game for everything, and I want to have a prefab for everything, and I want to build a map, an actual map that one day I will play on. That will be like it's going to be like my test level, my very first map, and it's gonna. I think if I do the art right, it'll it'll look pretty nice. I'll probably jump into Maya. <clears throat> quickly 3d model some some of the art that i need it doesn't have to be too complex or crazy i'm not the best 3d modeler but i do 
know how to do that. So we'll do that. But I think it'll look great. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been a short video just covering what I've done. Like, comment, and subscribe. Comment on what you would like to see in the future. Maybe you have ideas for what you want to, what you want to go into the game. You, you have uh, feedback on how stupid some of the things I'm doing. Or maybe you're an engineer who, who sees what I'm doing and you're just cringing. Let me know, guys. But my name is Ace Spades. Thanks for watching, guys. You have a great day. Slash night. Peace.